Welcome back once again to my walkthrough for Resident Evil Remastered, my friend. This time around I'm going to be playing on the real survival difficulty. It's going to be a no damage run. I figured that since a lot of you told me that you were struggling a little bit with real survival difficulty that it would be useful to make a walkthrough for it. And this time around I'm going to be playing as Jill Valentine and I'm going to be selecting her BSAA outfit since on my first walkthrough I used her original outfit. So let's just start by witnessing the intro and I'll be back shortly once the gameplay starts. Alpha Team is flying around the forest zone situated in northwest Raccoon City where we are searching for the helicopter of our compatriots, Bravo Team, who disappeared during the middle of their mission. Bizarre murder cases have recently occurred in Raccoon City. There are outlandish reports of families being attacked by a group of about ten people. Victims were apparently eaten. The Bravo team was sent in to investigate, but we lost contact. Look, Chris! Bravo team's helicopter was a derelict. Save for the remaining body of Kevin. We continued our search for the other members, and it turned into a nightmare. This way. There are only three stars members left now. Captain Wesker, Barry, and myself. We don't know where Chris is. What is this place? Not quite your ordinary house, that's for sure. Hey, Wesker, where's Chris? Jill, no. You don't want to go back out there. But we've got to find... What was that? Chris? No. Jill, go and investigate. I'm going with her. Chris and I go back a long way. All right. You two go. I'll secure this area. Stay sharp.
a dining room. Okay, so here we go, back to the mansion. Let's start by removing our handgun since Jill moves faster without it. I think you'd better take a look at this. What is it? Blood. Jill, see if you can find any other clues. I'll be examining this. Let's just hope it's not Chris's. Okay, so while Barry checks the puddle of blood, we're going to move on ahead. I would help Kenneth, but as you know, the way he dies is rather pathetic, so... Can't really do anything for him, he needs to learn how to shoot, that's all I'm going to say. What is it? Look out! It's a monster! Let me take care of it! What the hell is this thing? I found Kenneth killed by this thing. Let's report this to Wesker. Okay, so we're going back to the main hall now. And... We can get out of here. And it doesn't make a lot of sense while, how that zombie leaves the room so quickly and why doesn't he come after Jill and Barry? He's probably af afraid of Barry, that makes sense. Wesker! Jill, help me look for him. Let's not leave this hall. Good idea. Let's just climb up the stairs and back down, and that will trigger the next cutscene. Barry. Any luck, Jill? No, nothing. What's going on around here? I can't figure it out. Same here. Chris, and now Wesker. There's not much we can do. We can search for him separately. I'll investigate the dining room again. Okay, then. I'll try the door on the other side. This mansion is gigantic. We could easily get lost. Let's start from the first floor. Okay. Oh! I almost forgot. It's a lockpick. You'd make better use of it. Thanks. I may need it. Listen. If something happens, let's meet up in this hall. Got it? Okay. Okay, so finally back in control of Jill, we're going to move back to the dining hall as well. It's not like we're following Barry, but we need to go through there to obtain the golden arrow. It's the fastest path. And after that, we're going to collect the sword key. Make sure you collect those ink ribbons if you're doing a... If you're not doing a no saves run, you see... If you collect these initial ink ribbons and then you collect a couple more ink ribbons you'll be good to go all the way until the end of the game. Let's just take the videotape from Kenneth here. For those of you who might not know, the way real survival plays out, it's essentially the same thing as hard difficulty, but there are two main differences that make it harder. First, the auto aim option is gone. So you have to point your weapon manually at the enemies which can be a little bit tricky especially against fast enemies like the, ki the chimeras or the hunters for example or even the crimson heads. And the second difference is the fact that the objects that you place in the item box will no longer be available in other item boxes. So let's say for example you place your handgun in a chest. You will only be able to access the handgun if you go back to that chest. Obviously that makes your life a lot more complicated because your characters can only carry so many items per, per turn. Jill can only carry 8 items, Chris can only carry 6 items. So that makes your life a lot more complicated. 
because sometimes you'll have to travel back to collect a specific item to move on with the game or collect a weapon. But by following my walkthrough I'll explain where you should place each weapon so that you don't have to keep traveling back and forth and so that you can also make sure that you keep all the items that are crucial for you and that way you won't have too many problems. If you follow this path then you should be good to go. As for pointing your weapon manually you just have to make sure you're pointing in the direction of the enemy. It doesn't have to be perfect. For example, you can be pointing a little bit to the side for example and most likely you will still be able to hit the enemy so you don't have to point perfectly but nonetheless it can make your life a little bit harder one move that really comes in handy in real survival is the 180 degree turn in order to do a quick turn you need to press the square button and the direction button in which you want to turn so if you are playing on the Xbox it would be the B button and the directional button as well. I blew up this guy's head but that might not happen in your game. It was random but don't worry about these two zombies because they don't appear once again. In fact you can either dodge them and they'll be gone afterwards or and they don't come back as crimson heads like I said so it's not like it matters if you kill them or not. So we're going to start by going down and collecting the sword key now. For the most part the, the game plays out precisely the same way as it would on hard difficulty. You just have to be a little bit more selective where you place your items and that's really the main difference here. So I'm not going to bother reading the files once again because I've already done it on Jill's original walkthrough that I did. My very first walkthrough for Resident Evil Remastered. So now that we collected the sword key we're going back to the main hall and we are going to obtain the shotgun and the chemical and after that we can keep exploring the mansion. So let's start by heading back down. I'm not going to bother picking up the first floor map because I've done it so many times and at this point collecting the maps. If you know what you're, where you're going it's really pointless and you don't gain any rewards for collecting the maps and so on so don't bother with it. So just move to the next room. We will pick up a dagger here and there's also a handgun magazine a little bit further on but you won't need it. At this point the handgun has just become obsolete so you won't need to use it anymore. I'm almost inclined to come back to this corridor just to see the dogs jump out of the window because Ever since I played Resident Evil Remastered for the first time, I don't think I've actually witnessed that happen a single time. So let's start by picking up the chemical right here. And we are going to take it with us, we'll need it. Now we're going to collect another dagger, even though this is completely optional and you won't really need that dagger, but I still feel that I should show you. So just head through this room and pull the plug on the bathtub but like I said you don't need to do this it's not mandatory Whoa! 
I really don't know why Chris doesn't do the same thing that Jill did here in his walkthrough. I don't know why he doesn't step on the zombie's head and finish it off. In Chris's walkthrough, that zombie will keep following you around. It's actually rather annoying. But let's pick up the shotgun now. I don't even need to tell you by now that Barry is going to come to Jill's rescue. He had a Jill sandwich craving and that's why he came to inspect this area. Let's pick up the other dagger right here. And now let's get the shotgun. It's actually funny how the initial weapons that you collect in the game became become obsolete very early on, including the shotgun. Oh God, what did I do now? Wesker! Barry! Help! Jill! You in there? Barry? Get me out of here! The door's jammed! Stand back! <clears throat> Grab my hand! Barry! That was a close one. A second late, you would have fit nicely into a sandwich. Really? Thanks. But Barry, didn't you say you were going back to the dining room to find other clues? I'm glad and all, but why are you here? I just had something I wanted to check. Anyway, we should get back to searching for Wesker and Chris. Thanks, Barry. I owe you one. Don't mention it. It sure is great to have Barry appearing once again. I mean, it, he's such a helpful guy. I miss Rebecca as well. I'm sorry that she doesn't appear on Jill's scenario, but you can't deny that Barry can be quite more useful. I mean, Jill would have been dead by now if, if it wasn't for Barry. So let's just kill this zombie right here. His head will most likely always explode if you use your shotgun, so you have nothing to worry about. And this is actually going to conclude the first part of my walkthrough, my friends. In the next section we're going to clear out this mansion from start to finish and obtain all of the death masks. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you find this walkthrough useful. Thank you all for the support. I hope you enjoy, thank you for all the likes and comments, they always mean a lot to me. And I'll see you all later for part number 2, take care my friends.